Why don't we try to build the biggest mega park in central Singapore and it will also cater for three generations. It will be near the Topayo West Community Centre, surrounded by HDB blocks, so that the catchment will be very good. And uh, we're hoping that that will be ready by 2020, and I, I think residents will enjoy it very much. We ask ourselves, how do you make Bishan and Topayo a home that people say, I really like living here? We are an aging town, old town, but an old town doesn't mean a town that is drab. And we wanted it to be vibrant and homely. Every four or five years, Topayo and Bishan residents feel, oh, there's repainting, like there's just a feeling that it's evergreen and clean, and it will encourage people to keep their estate clean. So, uh, the digital displays was a way of updating uh, the way we communicate and these digital display allows us to put out more information, enable residents to know as well as to help deal with the common problems. Uh, these are not earth-shattering ideas, you know, repainting our blocks uh, more frequently or uh, upgrading lifts or digital uh, displays, but if you do it properly, attention to detail, it makes a difference to the Papaya resident. And, uh, and that's where the Town Council is so important to make sure that you, know, you deal with these issues professionally. You try to make sure that the programs are, are well rolled out so that you know, uh, residents can benefit from them. Residents of Bishan Topayo, good evening. Thank you for joining us for our fourth Facebook Live session with the PAP candidates for Bishan Topayo GRC. For viewers who are joining us for the first time, you can view our previous sessions on the candidates' Facebook pages. This evening, the candidates will be discussing the perspectives and aspirations of young residents. We extend a warm welcome to Minister for Defence, Dr. Ng Eng Hen, Senior Minister of State for Trade and Industry and Education, Mr. Chi Hong Tat, Mr. Chong Ki Hyong, and Mr. Saktiandi Supat. I will start the ball rolling with a few questions. Time permitting, we will then take some questions from Facebook, so do keep your comments coming in. Let's begin with a broad question. Topayo is one of the first HDB estates built more than 50 years ago and Bishan more than 30 years ago. Together, their elderly population is higher than the national average. So if someone were looking to live here in Bishan Topayo and asked, is Bishan Topayo a town for younger residents as well? What would your answer be? Thank you uh, very much, Darren, and I uh, appreciate your help in moderating this session and welcome back from your studies. Uh, I would say a categorical uh, yes. Uh, it's an older town, as you said, but uh, if you look at the amenities and the facilities, uh, they are ample. Uh, to have that kind of lifestyle which is active and uh, for... Uh, not only for recreation, but uh, serious sportsmen and sportswomen. Uh, if you just start with Topayo Stadium and Bishan Stadium, you're bracketed on both ends. And 
as you know, the Tabayo Stadium has a, a, a very good gym, which uh, many people subscribe to. And just next door, uh, I know for a fact that Safra Tabayo, when we build it, uh, it's full to capacity. It's the uh, most commonly used uh, Safra in terms of numbers. Uh, the, the pool, the gym and the Energy One gym there is uh, quite spectacular. So uh, that's just for facilities. But uh, there are two other aspects which I, I want to focus on and I know my, then my colleagues will jump in to bring in other details. But I've shared how as a planning philosophy for us as previously as MPs and now as candidates and if, if elected we'll continue it is that when it comes to enhancing uh, the town, we are basically going to uh, policy of we enhance the value of your homes and we enhance the value of your lives, your life, your day-to-day -day living. And when we look at how we can enhance the value of homes, uh, we talked about elderly fitness stations, which we built. But over and above that, if you just take a walk in any division in Bishan Topayo, I think you will uh, lose count of the number of uh, playgrounds. We made a conscious effort to have playgrounds and well-designed ones because, you know, we tell our town council, look, go and ask for expertise, have playgrounds that engage. Don't just build these things. Make sure they are durable, but they engage children and uh, be a, a adventurous but safe. And also, we are building more three-generation playgrounds. There's one right in front of here, or this block where we are, 157. But uh, Mr. Chi and I, we share a common boundary between Topayo West and Topayo Central. And one of, on that end is this CC. On the other end is my block of flats. And between him and my side is 200 meter. And both of us you know, decided that we we're going to have a, a three-generation recreation park that stretches the span of it. So we're excited about that, and he'll talk about a bit more. But uh, some of our playgrounds, whether by design or just by sheer luck, are in places which are prime land. And if you look at the playground next to Marymount Station, for example, that must be the most, one of the most expensive real estate you you can imagine and it's a playground I mean, <laughs> you come out of the MRT station and you have a playground you wonder if you're a real estate developer I think your heart would be painful so why in the world is it here <laughs> but you know I mean there we are we just thank URA for their planning it says thank you very much and how can you beat my Richie Reservoir right it will always be there and uh, people can run the 6km route the 12km route now uh, so the amenities, I think we are fortunate. I, I just want to talk about one other aspect which, I, which goes into the next five, ten years. And, and then I'll ask my colleagues to add. I'm excited about uh, how uh, connectivity will be very useful for our uh, sports enthusiasts. And I'm talking about uh, footpaths and bicycling paths. Uh, because we talked about it, and uh, Mr. Chong, when he opened up the, uh, when he we launched the inaugural ABC for the Bishan, and we saw joggers going up and down, they say that they can jog all the way to Kalang Base, and that's a connectivity on the waterway that is natural. You 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 can't easily get that, and you all know that the cyclists when they go north. The, the favourite route is to just cycle all the way to Sambawang. And I am excited because when Bidadari towns open up on the east side, when Caldicott opens up uh, on the west side, and uh, we've encouraged HDB and URA to try to link Topayo to the south of Ballastia side, and, and we talked about the Kalang Waterway, uh, I envisage for the next 10-15 years because every time you open up a link between Bishan and Topayo, you basically uh, open up that link for the rest of Singapore. So there's a lot of incentive to do it. So I think that uh, we're hoping that it will be a, a sports enthusiast uh, 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 paradise. 
and uh, I'm confident that you have more and more amenities uh, in that direction. I'll ask uh, my other colleagues to jump in. Could you add on to uh, what Dr. Ng shared about the three generation mega play park that is at the boundary of uh, Topayo West and Topayo Central behind Topayo West CC? Uh, this is going to be an iconic project that is uh, the, one of the largest play parks in central Singapore. Uh, total size, we're estimating about 8,000 square meters. Uh, it will incorporate uh, three thematic zones. There's a maritime port zone, there's a kampong, and there's an urban zone to reflect different aspects of Singapore's history, uh, Singapore's development. And for each of the zones, there will be different types of facilities. So you will have a water playground, you will have a sand playground, uh, you will have facilities catering to toddlers, young children, facilities for older children, uh, a skate park, scooter park. Uh, for adults as well, there will be a fitness corner. And also, of course, for seniors, a seniors fitness corner. Um, thinking of incorporating a 400-meter jogging trail. So the residents who like to jog, uh, this will be a wonderful place for you to have your exercise, have your workout. The whole family can enjoy it. Spend time with your family, your neighbours, your friends. Um, we are also thinking that uh, part of the, the setup uh, within Topayo OSCC, there will be a gym uh, in collaboration with Active SG. And my discussion with Active SG is that we will do not just a gym inside the CC, we want to use the play park outside so that they can bring some of the activities out into the play park so that residents can use the gym and also the play park to stay healthy, to stay active. Uh, so these are some of the plans that we have for this area. And the original plan is to finish this by end of the year, but because of COVID, there's a slight delay. So we're now looking at uh, first half of next year. Uh, but it will make progress over the next few months, and I think residents can look forward to this. Uh, within a year, we will get it up and uh, for residents to enjoy. Now, the other project that I think will be welcomed by our younger families and our younger residents uh, will be the covered plaza that we are going to build right next to the Topayo West market, the Block 127 market. Uh, there will be, currently it's an uh, open field, so we're going to put it into a hard court with shelter and we can put in some sports facilities under the shelter for residents to use. I uh, recently uh, got a very useful feedback from one of our residents, uh, Mr. John Cheong. Uh, he messaged me after uh, I met him uh, during one of my community walkabouts. And uh, Mr. Cheong said that, you know, we have got many basketball courts in Topayo and, you know, a lot of uh, young people, a lot of adults, they like playing basketball. But we don't have uh, many uh, mini basketball courts that are targeted at younger children. Uh, so when they go and they want to play the adult courts, it's a bit too high for them. And sometimes they get chased away by the older kids or by the other players. So Mr. Chong suggested, and I think it's a good idea, why not consider having a mini basketball court that is meant for younger children? Encourage them to learn how to play the sport, to acquire a love for basketball, uh, start young. I think that's a good idea. I've discussed it with the town council, and I think it's something which we can explore uh, as one of the facilities that we can include under the covered plaza. So maybe I add to that. So again, uh, healthy lifestyle is very important for the youth. So we have in uh, Singming, uh, Singming area, uh, in Singming Court, we build a healthy lifestyle hub. So you know, they can use that to play badminton and sipak takraw. And now it's not easy to find such badminton places because it's always fully booked. So basketball court, we even have a covered basketball court in Bishan, very popular. Um, we have a futsal court in B Bishan too, near Breda Road, between Bishan and Breda. Um, so all these are very useful. And uh, at the community centre, which is centrally located, uh, we have a 24-hour gym. It's a private gym, but it's, uh, it's conveniently located. So residents on their way home, and some of them have shift work, they can actually exercise before they go home. Um, you know, it's 24 hours and a lot of youth nowadays don't sleep so early. So they can actually visit the gym in the, you know, 2 a.m., 3 a.m. So all this, I think, um, relates pretty well with the youth. And I, I believe Singming um, and Pishan area uh, are properly um, 
uh, managed and properly um, featured for in a lot of activities for 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 the youth. Yeah. Maybe I can add on to what Mr. Chong and SMS and Minister mentioned. But before that, maybe I want to add on to what Minister shared about connectivity, the cycling part. Uh, I have a very avid cycling enthusiast group in Topai East um, who shared with me that the connectivity improvements have actually helped them a lot and I'm sure other residents from other parts of Topayo, and not just in terms of sporting uh, activities but also in terms of commuting. Some of them commuting to young families, work, commuting from Topayo to the south, working in, in, in the CBD area, uh, finding it very useful because the connectivity has improved uh, it can be enhanced further, but it has improved. And the connectivity to the south is, I think, something that uh, is good for young families. Second is, I think, I want to share about our 3G parks in Topai East. We have uh, built a 3G park at Block 17, in front of Block 17, which allows a, a myriad of uh, possible synergies between the young in, in Topai East and also those that are, who are more senior uh, to actually utilise that area uh, well. So 3G parks are actually something that has been developed but uh, the other point I want to share is that these themed playgrounds that we have in Topai East, all of us are familiar with the Red Dragon playground that we have seen at the back. Mm -hmm. It's historic uh, in Singapore. Um, it's, still full of, it's still filled with sand. Uh, but besides that, I think we built other theme parks in uh, Topai East. Uh, at Block 21, for example, we have a pirate ship. If you look at that, it's a new, nice-looking pirate ship. Uh, with a lot of um, interesting sort of uh, crooks and crannies for young kids to play. Um, and I think it's something that we want to develop even further in the new estates uh, in Topai East where we have uh, new developments such as the Kim Kiat Beacon and Kim Kiat Ripples. And I'm sure there'll be more uh, theme parks that's coming on stream. So those are exciting things for young families. Uh, and and um, the team playgrounds, it's I think going to be a, a, a major continuance going forward as well. Thank you very much. I'm I also wanted to add uh, about programs uh, beyond facilities. And over the years, through a conscious effort working with our uh, grassroots networks, we have tried to focus um, on organic programs that will draw crowds. And we worked with parents. Now, uh, it must be true of all uh, uh, towns, but Parents here uh, worry a lot about the children's education. And we wanted to have, uh, uh, give their children a break when uh, there is supposed to be a break. So over the years, uh, strangely or not, two programs have become very, very popular. Mid-autumn. Uh, and every year, I, I'm, uh, both at Topayo Central and I'm sure in the rest, we have a mid-autumn festival where we have a lantern parade around Topayo and thousands come out. And it coincides right at the September break. I can't promise that we'll do it this year because of COVID, <laughs> but uh, I hope we can. But uh, it's become so organic that people look forward to it. And the reason why it's become uh, very popular is because we have uh, the YEC championing it. And they have really adventurous idea. A few years ago, we held it in uh, Topayo Park. And they wanted uh, Chang'e, Chang'e is a flying ferry, to fly down Topayo Park. So I looked at them and I said, okay, if you want to do it, you go and do it. So they conceptualize uh, like a flying fox from the tower in Topayo Park and to hook up somebody, uh, uh, Chang'e, and then flying down and, and then uh, something that looked like the moon. So I didn't want to discourage them. I said, okay, you go and, you go and do it. Now, it was interesting because none of the agencies have ever received such an application. So they wanted to know who do you apply to to put a, uh, uh, that kind of from the tower because there was safety issues. So they had to go to M Parks, they had to go to Mio. They just kept, but finally they did it. And finally Chang'e sailed down. And you know, that really created a buzz. The second function that has taken a life of its own, we're talking about young families, is Halloween, right? I call it Ang Mo Chik you know. <laughs> 
And we, to, to us, I mean, Halloween was never something you grew up with, but it's big. And suddenly, you know, during Halloween, they are building these dark uh, haunted houses and the makeup is fairly ghoulish. And the children just uh, scream in, uh, in, in uh, torturous screams and love to be frightened. So I think, and you know, it's not our doing because we are a slightly different vintage. I mean, we, we, we didn't grow up. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we've tapped into uh, something which young uh, families uh, uh, are pushing themselves. So I think it's very useful. And uh, my, my colleagues may have other examples too. Well, Minister, I think that is a good example of how some of these activities are organised by young people for young people. So many of the volunteers who help to organise, they themselves are young people and I think they understand what young people want. Um, you know, we have uh, uh, another very important area that uh, we're actively exploring uh, is to have facilities that will allow dog owners uh, to be able to uh, let their dogs run without the leash on in a dog run. Uh, we have a very good and very, very big dog run in Bishan Park. I'm sure some residents have been there. Uh, when I was looking after uh, Ahud Road, uh, Ahud Gardens and Ballastier, uh, one of the projects that I did is also to do a dog run in that area. Uh, this is a uh, Taijin Road, you know, there's a Burmese temple, uh, there's a Sun Yat-sen villa. So at the end of that road, in the past, it used to be uh, just an open piece of land beneath the highway, so it wasn't well utilised. So I discussed with SLA and I convinced SLA to uh, make an investment to turn this open piece of land into a hard court and part of it can be used for community events uh, with lighting, with water. Uh, and part of it, we converted it into a dog run. So it was very popular with residents in Ballastia, with Ahud Gardens. And I understand even the Poyo residents have uh, brought their dogs cross over to the, the PIE uh, to go there to use the dog run. Um, there are many requests from dog owners uh, who, who want to have a facility in Topayo. Uh, we will try our best to look for a suitable site. Uh, one possible area that we are discussing with M Parks is whether when we uh, look at revamping, rejuvenating Topayo Park, we can incorporate a dog run in it. Uh, I think that will be a good location that will, that will serve the residents of Topayo well. So if we can do that, then we will have one dog run in Topayo and one dog run in Bishan. Thank you for that overview of both the facilities and the programs we have in place for our younger residents. Moving on to our next question, a common concern is that many young families find it hard to get BTOs even if their parents live here. So what would your advice be to, such, uh, to them? That's a, a, a very grounded question and that's exactly true and we don't want to overpromise. Uh, and all of us have the experience whenever there's a BTO that comes up, either in Bishan or Topayo, we get many appeals. Uh, unfortunately, the appeals are all the same uh, characteristics that my parents live here. But the problem is when all of them are the same, then you know that uh, the basis for exemptions become less. So what advice would I give? My advice comes from speaking to younger couples that I've met during our walkabout, what they have done. Uh, some have, and I'm not going to say what's right and wrong, for because individual couples will have to make their own decisions depending on their financial circumstances and, and, and other circumstances. But I'm just giving examples. So I've met couples who decided that they would uh, take a BTO on the towns that are further away first and then after a few years they would uh, buy a resale and they've done their calculations they would look for uh, flats in Topaya which are 15 20 years old and then they are willing to pay a premium and then they know that that's going to be their home and then they compare with you know private condominiums in nearby in Ballastia or in Potong Pasir and they say well this is this is worth it and uh, the ones that I met, they are very happy and they say, well, I'm going to stay. This is for me to stay for a longer time. Uh, some, of course, are more fortunate uh, that they, they stay with their parents. Others have decided that, they, that the problem with Topayo is that 
or is that you don't have many free uh, big plots of land that will have big BTO projects. So every time they build it, for example, whether Apex or Crest, it's in the hundreds. And every time you have, for example, four or five hundred flats, you have four or five thousand applicants. And just the chance of, 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 of balloting uh, come down. So what others have done is uh, to choose Bidadari. And as you know, those whose parents live in Bishan or Topayo have some priority in Bidadari. And uh, they've gone around it. I will end off by saying that uh, this is slightly a longer time frame, but the demographics of uh, the residents as well as the houses in Tuapayo lend themselves to rejuvenation over a longer time frame. What I mean is this. You've got flats now that are 40, 40 50 years. In a few years, you may be even 60. And the occupants, if they were first owners, are also getting on and more and more we're meeting them they're they are saying oh I want to downsize so I think over the next decade or so you're going to have movement and people are willing to uh, or not willing they, are, they, they want to look for for, for downsizing and they want to actually uh, uh, sell off their apartments and uh, there is more scope for rejuvenation as I said in the, the last session, uh, the largest, larger areas which will have more flats will be in Caldicott area as well as Bishan. So look out for those. It's a difficult problem, I know. Uh, it's just a reality that you don't have many, many large plots. But uh, there are opportunities and, you know, do your own uh, assessments and then make the best, uh, make what fits your lifestyle and your finances. Thank you, Dr. Heng. Well, let's stay on this topic of uh, young families. I think over the past five years, we have seen an expansion of early childcare, childhood education facilities in Bishan Topayo. Do you think you could share with us future plans in this regard and perhaps talk a bit as well about other ways in which you're supporting young families and young parents? Go ahead, Theo. Okay, for you know, we parents are always concerned and worried about the children's uh, well-being. So uh, tutoring, I mean tuition. Tuition is a very big business, um, you know. But we are trying to help the we are trying to help the um, these families with young children uh, who may or may not be able to afford the private tuition. And at the same time, we also want the community, the youth involvement in helping this group of uh, young children. So we actually work together, form a program uh, with the JCs, the junior college students, and get them to do academic tutoring to primary and secondary school uh, kids. And of course, during the period of COVID, they still carry on, but through um, you know, video and through Zoom. Uh, one is academic. I guess the other program we have what is what we call Esperanza, which is a Spanish word for hope. So it's similar to tuition, but this round, the program is to... It's more a well-rounded, it's a program for a well-rounded development of uh, children. So children are taught uh, character building and life skills. So in that sense, we cover both academic and non-academic. Yeah. So in that sense, I think we, we try to help the young, young parents uh, who are always very concerned about their kids' um, education and, a ho and a holistic uh, development. Maybe if I can add on to uh, what Kiong mentioned, I think for young parents, I think I was, I mean, some of, most of us here have young kids before and still have um, with childcare facilities. I think childcare facilities uh, in Topai East, for example, because of the new developments out of uh, the new BTO developments of uh, uh, Kimcat Beacon and Kimcat Ripples over the next uh, few years or next three to four years, uh, there will be possibility of enhanced numbers of um, childcare facilities. And I think that will be quite key especially young families that came in into Apex and potentially into uh, Kimcat Beacon and Ripples, the availability of childcare facilities uh, in those new developments uh, could, will increase. And we're looking forward to actually more uh, childcare places for young parents with their children. So I think those, those I think will be exciting developments or useful developments uh, for young families uh, in the Topai East area. 
Yeah, I, I have the same uh, experience as what uh, Andy has shared. Uh, when I first joined in 2015, one of the feedback that I got when I went around house visits and met many young families was that uh, the waiting time for kindergarten and childcare is quite long. So when we have an opportunity to uh, bring in new operators, uh, we want to do so. Uh, so I worked with uh, Agda uh, and we identified uh, how we could do this. So of course, uh, one, one area was our CC. So when we upgraded our CC, we uh, make sure that we also include uh, some space for childcare operator. Uh, and like Andy said, the BTO, uh, so the BioCrest, uh, very helpful when we have the BioCrest up. And then, um, there was an uh, activity uh, center, uh, first floor, the senior activity center, but the second and the third floor, uh, kindergarten and childcare. Uh, the other one that I think we did that uh, met the needs of residents uh, for childcare services was that we converted some of our kindergartens into dual service. Uh, this is something that the PCF has done. Uh, we, we understand that there are many working parents and you know, they prefer childcare, not just half-day kindergarten. So the, the um, effort was made to convert some of the kindergartens into dual service. So it will offer both kindergarten as well as childcare services. And this has helped both the parents, but also I think to give the children more time that they can spend in the centre. The teachers then have more time to interact with them, to teach them. Uh, this is part of the effort to really level up the quality of our early childhood education nationwide, not just in Bishan Topayo, but in Bishan Topayo, our young families, our children benefit from this effort. Thank you. I think this is a good opportunity to look at some questions coming in on uh, Facebook. Um, there's a, a pretty pertinent question, I, I think. And it's also a good segue into broader issues of national concern. Uh, and the question is, what is the government doing to support young grads and mid-career workers to find jobs in the current environment? Well, I'll ask uh, Mr. Chong to, because he's now ideally placed in both MTI, I mean, uh, uh, Cheong Tat, who's in the MTI and MOE, skills as well as opportunities. So maybe Hong Tat will start off. Okay, Minister. Um, the concern that we have is that in the near term, the job market will remain quite weak. Because of COVID-19, the economy is quite badly affected. So companies, many companies are not hiring as many people. And in fact, some in sectors like aviation, uh, hospitality, retail, F&B, which are more uh, adversely affected by COVID-19, may even be shedding jobs. So you have a double whammy. You have some industries that are uh, releasing workers, retrenching workers because the companies are not doing well, some of them are closing down. Uh, and then on the other hand, fewer companies are adding new jobs. Okay, so this is something which we want to take action to uh, prepare for before the retrenchment numbers start to rise significantly. So just as we set up the, the multi-ministry uh, task force, to make sure that we keep the infection numbers down uh, or what we call to, to uh, prevent the infection curve from rising. Uh, the same is done with the National Jobs Council to make sure that we keep the unemployment numbers down. And the preparation that we are doing now is to make sure that we uh, save and protect as many existing jobs as possible. So that's the first trust. On top of that, try and create new jobs with industries that are still growing, companies that are still looking for people. How do you create new jobs? Uh, but having done that, you, you try to save jobs. And I think job support scheme is one such very important policy, uh, including many of the measures like uh, temporary uh, bridging loan, uh, working capital loan to keep our companies uh, afloat so that they can protect jobs, save jobs. Now, beyond this and beyond creating new jobs, actually we do face a very difficult situation in the months ahead because despite all these efforts, we must be prepared that the number of people who are looking for jobs will still be more than the number of jobs available in the job market. That's a reality that we will have to grapple with uh, in the next uh, 6 to 12 months. So how, how do we want to do this? 
I think you need more options. So jobs, that is the preferred option if we can. We'll try and push for as many as possible. Create new jobs both in public sector and also in private sector. Uh, both permanent positions as well as more temporary positions. Uh, but I think on top of that, we need two other options. One will be traineeship positions. So working with companies, they offer uh, traineeship positions on the job training. Uh, the person can be paid a stipend. A government will co-fund 80% of this because on its own, the company will not be able to afford. So we pay, but we want the companies to offer these traineeship positions to train the workers to hold and train the workers so that when the economy were to recover later, these workers would then have the skills to take on those new jobs that are being created. Don't, don't waste the time now. Uh, the last thing we want is for people to do nothing for the next 6 to 12 months. That's not good for the individual. That's not good for the economy as a whole. We want the, we want the individuals to be trained, to be engaged, and at the same time, to be able to receive some allowance or some stipend largely funded by government, but with some co-payment by the company. Then training positions, training opportunities, that is the other option. We're working with the institutes of higher learning to offer training courses for both mid-career uh, individuals, but also for fresh graduates. So uh, MOE has uh, announced this earlier, that for universities, polytechnics, will be offering free CET modules for their recent graduates. So if you're a recent graduate and you want to continue to study, you want to continue to attend courses for the next few months, pick up a skill or deepen your existing skills, prepare yourself for the job openings to come when the economy gradually recovers. Then if you do that, you can either do it through your institute of higher learning or you can do it with a company under the traineeship program. For mid-career individuals, we are actually more concerned for this group because they have family commitments, they have financial commitments. And I think it's very important that we work with the companies to provide enough positions for mid-career individuals. Um, we are working out a mid-career pathway program uh, with a stipend of $3,000 per month that we can offer to mid-career individuals. Again, 80% funded by government, 20% co-funded by the company. Now, the, com the government needs to come in a big way because in an environment like this, if you leave it entirely to private sector, to the individual companies, they would not have the bandwidth, the resources, the capacity to offer too many jobs. So the government has to come in, support them, uh, co-fund these positions, and make sure that we create more, more job opportunities, more traineeship opportunities, more training positions. One last point I would like to make uh, on this jobs issue is this. I think for individuals who are looking for a job, um, I think what is very important is the engagement and to give them hope and confidence. So we're going to set up in each town uh, SG United Jobs and Skill Centre. Uh, there'll be one for Bishan, there'll be one for Topayo. Uh, we already have an E2Y centre. So if you're looking for a job now, you can already go to the E2Y centre and E2Y will try their best to help you. When we set up the SG United Jobs and Skill Centre in Bishan and Topayo over the next uh, few weeks, uh, these are also locations that you can go to. And there'll be people there to help you. Uh, they will organise job fairs, they will organise job-related services to help job seekers. Um, recently, we had one, uh, a, a big one, that was uh, attended by SM Taman, uh, Minister Josephine Teo, uh, Secretary General of NTUC, Mr Ng Chi Meng. And you know, they reported that the efforts made by the various uh, agencies, uh, WSG, E2I, they have already placed 12,000 people into jobs. 70% of these are public sector positions. And on top of that, they are now offering 7,000 new job positions, both in the public sector and private sector, 3,000 traineeship positions, and 6,000 training opportunities. So altogether, 16,000 jobs and training opportunities. So we hope the same can be done uh, in the next few months, including in centres in Bishan and Topayo to help our residents. So if you, need a, if you need a job, you're looking for a job, please go to one of these centres and we will help you. I think I just, just want to add on uh, to what Mr Chi has mentioned. Um, I'll say something in, in English, uh, in, in Malay. But I think what Mr uh, SMS mentioned is I think very pertinent. I've chatted with a young uh, uh, sort of resident earlier today, uh, Mr Douglas Chow. He just uh, uh, finished his NS 
and he wanted to start working. Um, and he mentioned that he applied for the SG traineeship program that Mr. SMS mentioned. And he's looking for a, a SG traineeship in events management. So I think it's, it's an opportunity for young um, Topayo East residents to take up examples like what SMS mentioned uh, whilst uh, they want to look out for work and are affected by this COVID-19 uh, crisis. So take up the SG traineeship thing in specific sectors that they're interested in so that they gain experience and still get uh, work. Um, so I, may, maybe now I'll share a bit in Malay. Um, the gov- para pem- pemerintah dan actually mendaki sense eh, telah mempers- menyediakan setiap warga uh, laluan kepulauan pekerjaan dan latihan uh, sewaktu COVID-19 uh, crisis 19 ini. Uh, seperti majlis uh, pekerjaan nasional yang diteraju oleh uh, Menteri Kanan uh, Taman, uh, ia akan menyelia implementasi dan pelaksanaan uh, hampir 100,000 peluang pekerjaan uh, dan latihan. Tu saya rasa amat baik sekali uh, memberi uh, pekerjaan yang um, lebih banyak lagi untuk pekerja-pekerja uh, di Singapura uh, dan terutama sekali untuk warga Melayu Islam di di, di Topayo dan di Bishan. Uh, di antaranya adalah uh, pekerjaan SG United yang telah katakan tadi tetapi apa yang Encik SMS katakan tadi adalah dari segi uh, SG United bertagu, uh, bertegur bersatu latihan dan laluan pertengahan kerjaya SG uh, United. Uh, pertama, traineeship itu ataupun latihan SG United itu memberi peluang untuk mereka yang baru graduan-graduan yang daripada ITE, Poly, yang baru lulus daripada universiti umpamanya yang ingin mendapatkan pekerjaan tapi susah mendapat tapi boleh um, mengambil apa aplikasi ya untuk uh, latihan uh, SG United ini uh, jika tidak dapat pekerja uh, pekerjaan yang uh, jangka masa panjang untuk jangka masa pendek. Yang kedua, mereka yang bekerja mid-career umpamanya, laluan pertengahan kerjaya, ada juga uh, peluang-peluang untuk mereka uh, mengambil pe- apa, pekerjaan uh, dari segi mid-career atau uh, laluan pertengahan kerjaya yang disediakan oleh SG United dan oleh pemerintah. Uh, yang selain itu, saya ingin juga memberi uh, keterangan eh, tentang mendaki sense. Mendaki sense juga memberi pertolongan kepada pekerja uh, Melayu Islam yang ingin mencari pekerjaan, Mendaki Sense uh, ada bekerjasama dengan E2I dan beberapa lagi agensi pemerintah untuk menolong masyarakat Melayu Islam, pekerja-pekerja masyarakat Melayu Islam uh, yang ingin mendapat pekerjaan. Jadi terus pergi ke Mendaki Sense selain E2I dan WSG dan juga pelbagai uh, apa, pemerintah, ya, apa, program-program pemerintah dari segi menolong mereka dari segi SG United. Terima kasih. I just wanted to make a, reiterate a short point that um, uh, that I've made before, but let me emphasize for the months ahead where jobs, um, securing jobs will be a key focus. Uh, I think the, the candidates that we have are a better place than uh, some because of where they are. Uh, Senior Minister of State Chiong Tat is uh, MTI, MOE, so intimately uh, intimate knowledge of the opportunities as well as uh, the skills and the schemes available. Uh, Mr. Chong Ki Hyong and Mr. Sakti Andi are from the private sector. And of course, Mr. Chong also has uh, uh, close links with NTUC. And they are, have a feel of what's going on in the private sector. And, uh, and uh, last but certainly not least, Ms. Gan Xiao Huang is Deputy C of E2I. So among ourselves, we will have to uh, come up with uh, the pool, the schemes that are available and then bring it to the ground and then let our residents uh, 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 serve our residents better because when it comes to jobs and I was in Ministry of Manpower when uh, during SARS and unemployment went up 5-6% you can have broad schemes but as all of us know when you to that individual, he's not a digit. He, he makes a decision not just, on, uh, not just on the pay alone, but he wants to be able, he or she wants to be able to feel that he's adding value to the job and to the company. And as uh, Senior Minister of State Chi says, it's often an issue of confidence. And, uh, and when, especially they had to change sectors and they have to compete with younger peers, they have that sense of foreboding. So some you have to handhold, some you have to 
make sure that they can make that transition. But when they do, I think the joys of it, when we saw it, when they're able to have a vocation that can last them a, uh, the next career, I think it's very fulfilling. So we have to do more of that. Thank you. We have quite a number of questions on Facebook pertaining to uh, local Bishan Topayu issues. So I think it'd be a good chance to go back to some of those now. So uh, let's, let's take uh, this one. Uh, what activities have you carried out involving youth in our community? Uh, SMS Chi, I know that you've done quite a bit for youth in Topayo West, uh, your football and other sports, so perhaps you could, uh, you could start, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you, Darren. Um, you know, we, one of the things that uh, I personally feel very happy about is our collaboration with Active SG Football Academy. Uh, so we set up uh, this uh, uh, program and we invite our residents to participate. We send their children and we hold it at Topayo Stadium. Uh, we have coaches coming from Active SG Football Academy. And, and these are professional coaches, in fact, including some of the former national players. Uh, but they try to bring the sport uh, into a way which young children can enjoy. So it's a little bit similar to what I mentioned earlier about mini basketball court. You, know, you, you have to um, let... It's a, it's a scaffolding, right? So if you plunge the kid into the sport without a process of uh, building them up, then they will not have the confidence, they, they will not enjoy the game as much. But if you have a way of letting them learn the basic skills in a safe environment before they move on to more competitive arena, I think that's a better way to give them the confidence and to build up the interest. So that's what the Active SG Football Academy tries to do. So now we have grown it over, over time. It's very popular. Um, uh, I join them sometimes. I go to uh, Topayo Stadium. And you know what, what is really amazing is that you see the parents who are also there joining in with some of the other activities. Uh, so they may do the Zumba, they may do the, uh, some of the, the sports uh, activities that are there uh, at different stations. So the child, their children or their child uh, will be learning football and the dad and the mom will be doing an exercise or joining some other activities nearby or maybe at the gym. And then later when they come back, when the child has finished the football lessons, uh, they can go off for their breakfast or their brunch. Uh, so this is, this is a good family activity to bring the whole family together. And for the children, another very important aspect is this. Now, football is a way to allow children from different backgrounds, different ethnic communities, different socioeconomic backgrounds, to mingle, to mix, to make friends. And I think, you know, in, in, in this uh, environment where we are all very concerned, all of us are very concerned about uh, income inequality, social divide, uh, we need to encourage more of such activities where, you know, bring people together, bring different communities, bring different groups of people together uh, through a common interest like football. Uh, we break down barriers, we make friends, we, we strengthen the bonds between people. And for the children, I think they learn teamwork. They don't just learn football, right? They learn a lot of other useful values through football. And at the same time, they enjoy the game. Uh, but I, I want to add, Darren, that it is not just what we do for our residents, for our young residents. It's also what our young residents do together with us to help improve the environment, to support certain important causes that they believe in. Uh, there is one group I want to mention. Uh, the name of the group is called Hope for Animals. And it is uh, being pioneered by this young lady, uh, Miss Melody Tan. Uh, and she has roped in a, a group of her friends, including her husband, uh, Mr. Dominic Neo. And you know, they are a very passionate group of young people. I'm very impressed by what they have done. They started with an idea. And you know, they had to overcome quite a lot of different obstacles. Uh, Dr. Nung mentioned earlier about Chang'e having to you know, get a lot of approvals before she could uh, 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 come down, slide down from the tower. Uh, same for Melody and her team. When they first wanted to do this, it wasn't easy for them because it was a new program. A lot of agencies were not familiar with what they wanted to do. But they support animal welfare, uh, adoption of pets. And what, what is very uh, positive is that they grew the event over time. So, so I've been supporting them for a few years and I can see how much effort and, and, and passion they put into it. And you see how the event has grown over the years. Uh, they now include 
uh, people who do pet-related businesses. They sell pet food, uh, they sell uh, pet accessories, uh, and you also see an uh, increase in the, in the range of uh, pets that this event has uh, catered for. So it's not just uh, catering to dogs and cats, which was what they focused on when they first began. Then later on, we also have uh, rabbits. Uh, I met uh, Angie, who is a rabbit groomer. And uh, uh, I met uh, uh, two, two brothers, Morgan and Merrill. Uh, they started an ant farm, and they wanted to promote this uh, ant farm as, a, as, a, as pets for people to... It's a, it's a new type of hobby. So, you know, it's a nice way of bringing young people together. And also, the rest of us who are not so young, we can also uh, participate. And, you know, what, what impresses me is their, their passion and their ability to convert this passion into action. I'd like to jump in here too, you know. In addition to what we do and what we build um, to attract the young uh, to stay with us, actually I think the, the young, the youth, actually they want to contribute back, you know, through community work. So our youth network actually engaged, uh, engaged them quite actively. So, I mean, we have this silver home project where the youth uh, come together, visit rental blocks, you know, do cleaning of their house, buy groceries for them, especially during the COVID period. Uh, and of course, at, uh, uh, at the festive um, occasions, they will go to places like Lion's Home, you know, to perform for the elderly and for the residents there. So, we also have uh, what we call Project Go where the youth come together to help seniors embrace technology with ease. As you know, you know, as a senior residents, they are always, you know, concerned about digitalization, concerned about technology, so they were concerned that they cannot cope. So these youth come together and, you know, and uh, teach them how to, for example, how to use their smartphone. So from uh, WhatsApp to now maybe how to do QR code scanning, for safe entry purposes, and uh, from FaceTime to now Zoom. So they can also um, use Zoom now for their lessons on how to use a smartphone, right? Uh, we also want to extend uh, our befriending uh, services. So we work with schools to get students to say adopt a block of flats and so that they can bef befriend, provide befriending services to the elderly residents uh, that stay alone there. So we, we, I think it's very important to, to bring the youth together uh, so that they can learn from each other, uh, build a tighter network and contribute back to the community. Thank you, Mr. Chong and yeah. Mr. Chi. Another question from Facebook. How do you plan to improve our sports facilities? Um, I think we'll look <laughs> One or two months ago, uh, MCCY announced uh, the integrated project at Topairo. That's a large project. Now here I want to be careful because uh, we made an announcement some years ago that the sports complex will be uh, uh, upgraded uh, based on ministry's plans. And, uh, and, and for budgetary reasons, uh, it was delayed. So MCCY has announced that they hope to be able to do this upgrading of the Tapayo Sports Complex, an integrated one, over the next decade. And uh, we have to look forward to it. So I think that will be a big uh, major change in terms of the sports facilities that you can get because that's a huge project. But as I said at the outset, even, from, even without that, you have uh, ample sports opportunities. But certainly if they can do that, I think it would, uh, it would really open up many more opportunities for sports enthusiasts. Thank you, Dr. Ng. Um, in returning to uh, broader national issues, perhaps uh, I think this question is best directed at, uh, at SMS Chi. What is the government doing to make the schooling system less stressful for our kids <laughs> and put less emphasis on paper qualifications? Pretty yeah. pertinent question, I think. Yes, yes, indeed. I, I think, you know, with uh, uh, the moves that MOE has been making uh, over time, uh, you know, starting from uh, SM Taman when he was uh, Minister for Education, and then after that was uh, Dr. Ng Hen, uh, and then uh, DPM Heng Sui Kiet, uh, Minister Ng Chi Ming, uh, 
and now Minister Ong Ikang. I think you can see they built on what has been done over the years to make these shifts to our know, education policy. Now, someone once described that you know when you are making changes to education, uh, it's like you are trying to change the direction of a big aircraft carrier because the education system is huge, and there are there are many schools, there are many stakeholders, many students, uh, teachers, uh, parents. You know, you, you you can't just make sudden shifts. You have to uh, build it up and make sure that whatever changes you make will remain educationally sound. And we are guided by the professional uh, uh, advice from our colleagues, uh, our educators, in terms of you know, what will be the best interest of our students. So if you look at what are some of these shifts over the years, you can see that uh, one key development is the provision of more pathways. And I think this is helpful in reducing the stress because now you have more options. You don't just have a few fixed pathways, and if you miss a particular pathway, you feel that, wow, it's very difficult for you to come back on track. But if you have more pathways, and there are multiple pathways, sometimes leading to the same final destination. Uh, a good example, a good example would be that if you go to ITE, you can still go to poly, and from poly, you can still go to university. So you may not go through the uh, O-level, A-level, to university pathway, you may go through the ITE poly university pathway, but you will still end up being able to pursue what you like to study. So multiple pathways, I think it's one way of reducing stress. Now, the other one that I think is helpful is this, is to not pay too much emphasis on just the outcomes of one test. So I think your PM once said that uh, what we want is to prepare our children for the test of life and not for a life of tests. And I think this is very important because when you are out there in the real world, uh, what you learn in school is not just the academic subjects that will help you, but it's also how to work with people, character development, the soft skills. I think it's the whole person development that eventually will help prepare our children for the future. And now with COVID, I think we, even more so, we need to emphasize on this need for our children to be well-rounded, to be versatile, to be uh, well-equipped to adapt to changes. Because it's so difficult now to predict which industry will do well, which skill sets will be in demand. So I think this concept of training our young to be versatile, to be adaptable, to be flexible, to be able to make changes when it's necessary to do so, I think that will be a very useful skill. Now, the last point I will make on this is it doesn't end just because you finish your schooling, your formal schooling. So you don't have to cram everything that you need to learn within the school system because there's this thing called skills future, lifelong learning. So even if you can't finish learning everything that you need for the job, they can still have on-the-job training, you can still have continuing education and training, CET, that can prepare the person to take on new roles and new jobs. And that's what we were discussing earlier when we were talking about the economy and jobs. Actually, this is increasingly important to be able to prepare our workers when you switch from one industry to another industry, when the same industry is going through transformation, you need new skill sets. Not everything you can learn from school. But what you need to learn from school are the basic foundations, character development, values, teamwork, soft skills, and of course, a certain uh, sort of uh, uh, literacy and numeracy competence that will allow you to build on it and later on acquire further skills depending on what you need to go deep into respective sectors. Thank you, Mr. Chi. I think we have time now for one final question. We've covered quite a bit of ground tonight, ranging from uh, facilities, programs, jobs, education, and so on. So it might be helpful to just try and summarize and pull these uh, different threads together. Mm -hmm. So maybe in two to three sentences, do you think each of you could share the key message you have for young residents of Bishan Topayo? Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Actually, my key message is as such. Uh, you know, I, I need more volunteers, right? So I would like to encourage our youth to step forward and contribute to the community. So if you have a good idea and would like us to facilitate, you have our full support. So I believe that by contributing, uh, you will gain just as much, if not more, from the experience, and you will have a sense of fulfillment. 
So please join us. Yeah, I fully agree with Kiong. I think uh, getting our young people involved is very important. You know, we have to provide opportunities for them to convert their passion into action and to convert their ideas into outcomes. And I think this is best done when we look at specific projects, uh, where we look at how we can work together as a team, uh, bring in different partners. And I think you know, we are uh, very fortunate that we have many supportive uh, corporate sponsors, we have many supportive uh, uh, organizations, uh, VWOs. Uh, they are willing to work with us on this. And I think our young people will have uh, no lack of opportunities. If you are willing to contribute, you want to make a difference uh, to whether is it protecting the environment, animal welfare, looking after the vulnerable. You know, there are many opportunities to work together on this. So please join us and let's make it happen together. Let's make Bishan Topayo our best home and a caring community. Yeah, to add on to what SMS and Mr. Chong said, to the young residents of uh, Bishan Topayo, um, I say get involved locally. I think Topayo and Bishan will only be as exciting as what you make of it. And the difference you can make really does start at home, your neighbourhood, your community, and whether it is helping the less privileged, uh, building awareness on broader community issues or social or environmental, or just building communities uh, around your interests, be it sports or photography or, or the like. I believe the, the biggest difference you can make is here at home in Bishan Topayo. So hopefully we can get more of you coming forward and helping um, others of various ages as well in Topayo and Bishan. I'll take a slightly different tack. So for the, the young families and uh, young residents here, uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, they, are, uh, they will be happy with the facilities and the type of programs. But if you are not a resident yet of Bishan and Topayo, uh, I would fully encourage you to look at this town. Uh, if you are fortunate enough to get a BTO, that's very good. If you're looking for resale, look at it seriously. I want you to come here with your young families. I want you to grow old here and improve this town as you age with your family members. Thank you very much to all our candidates. We have come to the end of tonight's dialogue session. To our viewers at home, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Our final e-rally will be held on Wednesday at 8pm. Please join us. Good night and take care. <laughs>